So hey guys, this is Raymond, and today I'm gonna talk about this kind of armor for Arnis. Right? And I'm gonna go through a lot of things about it. So to get started, let's talk about the history. Um, I think this thing became popular back in the uh, 70s and the 80s, right? Um, some people call this the wake up armor, or some people just more generically call this the live stick armor, because this is used in a lot of live stick competitions for Arnis. So live stick. For those who don't know, means um, they use uh, real rattan sticks without any padding. Right. Um, so there we are. So it's been around since that time. Supposedly, it's based. Some people uh, think it's based on um, what do you call this? Based on uh, Moro armor, where they had brass plates and chainmail. It's supposed to emulate that, and it does have a similar outline, a similar silhouette. But honestly, I think when I look at the older pictures of um, the Weka competitions, it actually looks closer to a uh, fencing jacket than anything else. Um, of course, the lines changed a little bit, like the neckline changed, the sleeve changed, but it's, it, it has a more fencing jacket. For one thing, it used to be a whole lot shorter. It used to be only up to your hip. Right? And then they changed it, made it a little bit longer to make it, yeah. Like I've seen versions that look close well, I'm not entirely sure, but they kind of remind me of a barong outline, okay, that more traditional formal wear. Anyway, so the, I'm a little bit shaky on the history of that. Um, but it's been around since then. People have been using it, and it hasn't changed much in the past few years. Um, so the basic construction, uh, it's kind of visible here, but it's basically two layers of cotton, cotton fabric. And sandwiched between those two layers of cotton fabric is rubber, hard rubber, and foam, you know, to help dissipate the, the pressure and impact on your body. And that's basically it. And it's on the back, I don't know if it's visible, but it's strapped together using Velcro straps, giant Velcro straps. Um, so, what do I think about it? Um, honestly, I think it can stand to be improved. Uh, and it's about time it should be improved. Um, if you take a look at it, okay, this is very obvious if you take a look at this. The material has torn up. Like on the left side, it goes up until the elbow, right? And then it splits open to go all the way up the form, right? Here. And <clears throat> when you look at it, great, fine. When your arms are down, your arms are protected. But when you actually have to fight, and your arms are raised all the way up here, then it, this will naturally tear. And I've seen it club after club after club. There's a natural tearing with uh, sleeves and it goes all the way up here. So essentially your arms really aren't protected uh, during live stick comp competitions, your forearms, unless you wear a separate piece for your forearms. And I've seen people like wear hockey gloves that go all the way up to the middle forearm. So there's just a small part here that's open, but anyway, this really isn't protecting much, right? Um, and if you take a look at the armpit, it's like attached at the armpit, right here. Okay, so the mobility again is compromised. So it's, um, right, it was an okay idea, honestly, but it can stand to be improved. Uh, the lower part, I'm really not happy with this. They just opened the slit for the thighs, which is great, right? Again, more mobility than closing up. Um, but the thing is, in WECAF rules and in a lot of live stick competition rules, thighs are a legal target, right? And this is probably the part I really hate the most about this, is in order to protect the thighs, right, instead of giving you thigh armor or whatever, what they do is, they give you this little skirty thing, like this super science skirty thing. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to move back a little bit. The skirt, right? Why am I not happy with the skirt? Number one it changes the silhouette of the player, right? If you take a look at it, you know, if I were wearing my normal street clothes, I would be wearing pants or shorts like I am wearing now, right? And you would have two distinct legs. You would not have this silhouette of, uh, <laughs> you know, just knees and feet, you know, you'd have that, right? So this is something that's really evident if you start competing in padded stick competitions, what I've noticed is um, legs get hit a whole lot more 
in pad and stick competitions, not because of the rules or anything like that, but because of the silhouette of the armor. If I do this, right, it changes the silhouette of my leg so that no one can hit it with any kind of authority. And you're saying, hey, isn't that the point of the equipment to protect the player? Fine. But what I'm saying is, if it's protecting the player by changing the silhouette, then you're doing something that the armor is not supposed to do. It's breaking down the rules or the the concept of a competition. So I'm going to make a video about that, about the metaphor of a competition. But an artist competition is supposed to be, right, two unarmored guys fighting with sticks. Basically, that's it. If you do anything that interferes with the sticks movement, then you're creating something that does not match with that idea correctly. Like, so if you take it to an extreme, right, you can have those like flat little things that the Japanese have in their shoulders, uh, in the, you know, the, the old samurai armor, the shoulder bits they have where it's flat and it goes all the way up here. Great protection for your neck because it changes the silhouette of the body. You know, it's not the normal human silhouette. Same thing with the helmet, with the with the coif, I think they call it, where it's just, it drapes down all the way to your neck, right? Protects your neck perfectly, and that's what you want in war. But it protects your neck by changing the silhouette. You don't have the silhouette of an unarmored man anymore, and I'm, I'm really not happy with that. Right? So, right, what, what are my proposals for improving this? Well, number one, um, for the arms, my main one is change where the seams are, right? What my suggestion is is just to open up the sleeves, the, the like the armpit section, so that the arms can move independently, like not like this where it's attached like a normal shirt sleeve. Um, that will improve mobility so much more, and you can have a tighter, tighter arm arm you know arm protection that goes all the way up to your sleeve. In my mind, I'm thinking more of a padded jacket rather than this, um, you know, thing with the plates and stuff. For the lower part, I want the jacket to only go up to the, about the hip section and for people to have a separate, like, leg armor, totally. That's my idea. Like, I've seen um, hockey players with their padded shorts. It looks a little too bulky. Um, I don't know, maybe that has... Uh, insulation for the cold so we might not need those um, but to make it separate chest and legs that would be a good idea it will create mobility maintain the silhouette and I think improve the sport in general just the mobility and the movement of the players so you'll have movement that has more correspondence with um, real life right so story time uh, I remember competing uh, in an earnest tournament or Eskrima tournament, whatever, in Cebu, and this is the equipment that they use. So, you know, we use it, no problem. Um, and this is what I've noticed. Like, I listened to the other participants there. Um, the older guy was telling one of the younger players, like, oh, okay, this is the technique that you're going to use in the competition. And the younger player asked, like, why is it like that? Shouldn't it be like this? Like, he showed the, the technique to his senior, and the senior goes, okay, that technique works because you can put your arm over your head like this. With this, your arms are going to get tired if you keep doing that. So just keep your arms low and strike low. Again, this thing is interfering with how the players would normally fight if they were unarmored, which is the general idea of this competition, right? of competitions in general, in earnest. Um, so yeah, it, it's the, the effect is just not just with me, I think. Uh, everybody's styles are getting affected with it affected by it and it should change so another thing that we can change is with the rules I think they're starting to do this now um, they're going to stop describing uh, that this is the armor because right now if you read any of the rules they say okay this is the armor that's it so we're going to probably see in the future hopefully we see this in the future that it will change into instead of this is the armor it's going to change this is what the armor can do which is a big change. Like the armors, the armor, the helmet must not allow a certain, uh, you know, thickness of stick to get through. The chest piece must protect the torso, the kidney, the spine, that kind of thing. It must protect the elbows, the knees, and everything. So as long as you have armor that fills in those criteria, you know, and it gets inspected by the the organizers, 
then you're going to have better equipment for earnest participants because right now everybody's using this you know and i've seen guys have this like custom made so it fits better in their arms and it makes the move so much better but it's still the same design it's you still see the stupid little tear yeah um i'm really annoyed by this from a design perspective like if something keeps tearing that's a lot of stress uh happening there so you have to address it anyway so there we go so um those are my thoughts i'm going a bit rambly about it um but there we are so this is my review of the live stick uh, armor